Hello, we pass to the last topic of this series of lectures, and this will be about Laplace equation. And in this video, we discuss harmonic polynomials in two dimensions. So, the Laplace equation in two dimensions is a PDE for a function u of two variables u of x and y. And the PDE looks like u sub xx plus u sub yy is equal to zero. So this is the Laplace equation for a function of two variables. Let's call it L. It is often denoted as triangle on u is equal to zero, where this triangle operator is just second partial sub x plus sub second partial sub y. The Laplace equation is a linear homogeneous second order PDE. It is linear homogeneous second order PDE. And what is important, it is an elliptic equation. So now let's pass to its solutions. A function u satisfying the Laplace equation is called harmonic. So harmonic functions are just solutions to the Laplace equation. Okay. Today I want to discuss harmonic polynomials. So let us state the problem. Find all homogeneous polynomials of degree n which are harmonic. Okay, so that's the problem that we are going to solve in this video. So what is a homogeneous polynomial of degree n? P function of x and y polynomial of degree n is called homogeneous if and only if p of lambda x lambda y is lambda to the power n p of x y okay so when n is equal to zero the homogeneous harmonic polynomial of degree zero is just a constant if n is equal to one the homogeneous polynomial of degree one which is harmonic is just given by a zero x plus a one y and since the Laplace equation is linear and homogeneous we have a two-dimensional vector space of homogeneous harmonic polynomials of degree one spanned by x and y and one-dimensional vector space of harmonic homogeneous polynomials of degree zero so when n equal to the situation gets more involved and we want to do it for any n greater than or equal to. Okay, so let's write the most general homogeneous polynomial of degree n. So the most general homogeneous polynomial of degree n is given by p of x y is equal sum from i equals 0 to n binomial and i the coefficients a i now y to the power i x to the power n minus i i put this binomial coefficient here for convenience 
this is the most general homogeneous polynomial of degree n with this ai arbitrary constants. We want to find these ai's such that this polynomial satisfies the equation pxx pyy is equal to zero. So we look for those ai's here which make p to satisfy this equation. So let's calculate p sub xx. It's obviously sum from i equals 0 to n and i. And now there will be coefficients from here coming from the derivative. So there will be n minus i n minus i minus 1 then there will be a i y i x to n minus i minus 2 All right but now you can see that this sum although it is from 0 to n but if i is equal n the term coming from i equal equal to n comes with the coefficient 0 and as well the term coming from the coefficient n minus 1 when i is equal n minus 1 this coefficient is 0 so actually this sum is effectively only till i equal n minus 2 so now passing to the derivative of p with respect to y we'll get that this sum from i equal 0 to n and i i i minus 1 a i y i minus 2 x to the power n minus i and now although this sum is from i equal 0 we see that the, the term with i equal 0 doesn't contribute because I stay here as well the terms with i equal to 1 doesn't contribute so effectively this sum starts from i equal to and now it is convenient to introduce a new index j such that where i is equal to j is equal 0 so it is an index j equal i minus 2 or what is the same i is equal j plus 2 and if we just be enumerating this sum in terms of index j you will get that this is equal the sum from j equal 0 to n minus 2 n over j 2 j plus 2 j plus 1 i j plus 2 y j x to n minus j minus 2 right so now if we call again this j by i we'll get that this sum is equal to sum from i equals 0 to n minus 2 and i plus 2 i plus 2 i plus 1 a i plus 2 y i x n minus i minus 2 i could have done this because if i call this index by j or by i it's the same right but now if we compare these coefficients here with these coefficients here we see that they are the same and the summation here is like a summation here from 0 to n minus 2 so now if we add these things together then you'll get that this sum from i equals 0 to 
put in minus 2 and now we will have this thing n sub i n minus i n minus i minus 1 then there will be a i here and then there will be from here this thing n over i plus 2 i plus 2 i plus 1 a i plus 2 and everything multiplied by y i x n minus i minus 2 and you want this to be 0 therefore you want that each of these coefficients is 0 so from here we have the following equation for a i and a i plus 2 that is n i n minus i n minus i minus 1 a i plus n i plus 2 i plus 2 i plus 1 a i plus 2 is equal to 0 but now observe that this thing is just n factorial i factorial and now should be n minus i factorial but n minus i factorial is n minus i minus 2 factorial times n minus i and times n minus i minus 1 and this will cancel with this so this this expression here is this let's look at this one there is n factorial divided by n minus i minus 2 factorial times a plus 2 factorial but a plus 2 factorial is a factorial times a plus 2 which cancel with this times a plus 1 which cancel with that so actually this thing is equal to this but this is the same as that right so in other words this equation means there is this thing that stays here that I put out and there is a i plus a i plus 2 is equal to 0 so this equation is satisfied provided that a i plus 2 is equal to negative a i for every i from 0 to n minus 2 all right okay so what does it mean this means that we have two series of possible AIs so now we have to consider two cases either i is even where k runs from 0 1 up to the largest integer which doesn't exceed n half or i is odd where k runs from 0 1 up to the largest integer not larger than n minus 1 half right okay so let's write now the first case when i is even so let's write possible case 0 1 2 3 now here there will be a i's but note that this formula says that a i's differ by 2 so here will be a 0 here will be a 2 here will be a 4 here will be a 6 and so on and now this formula tells me but if I start with a0, a2 is minus a0, a4 is minus a2, so it is plus a0, a6 is minus a4, so it is minus a0. So in other words, from this we say, that this, we see that this equation tells us that a to k is equal to negative 
1 to the power k a0. Likewise, if we now consider the, that i is odd, if you write k 0, 1, 2, 3, blah, 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 then here you have a of i's. So we should start with now k is equal 0, so we have to start with a1. And now the next one will be a3, a5, and so on, right? But now, again, this formula tells us that a3 is minus a1, a5 is minus a3, so it is plus a1, and so on. So from here we see that a 2k plus 1 is equal to minus 1 to the power k a1. And here k runs from 0 to n half, and here k runs from 0 to n minus 1 half. That's our solution for a's, and we see that these a's are totally determined by a0 and a1. So the space of solutions for a given n is always two-dimensional. And now if we insert this and that into our definition of our homogeneous polynomial of degree n, which was, remember, pi xy is sum from i equals 0 to n, n i a i y i x to n minus i. So we now have to write it as a sum over case where i is either 2k or i is equal to k plus 1. So there will be sum from k equals 0 to n half integer value. And now there will be n over 2k. Then there will be a 2k. And then will be y 2k x n minus 2k plus now there will be sum over i's which are odd so it is sum from k equals 0 to n minus 1 half integer part and now we will have n of 2k plus 1 a 2k plus 1 y 2k plus 1 and x n minus 2k minus 1, right? And now if we just insert this, what we get from our harmonic condition, then we will see that we have here a0 times sum from k equals 0 to n half integer part. Now a to k is minus 1 to the power k n to k y to k x n minus 2k plus a1 and now sum from k equals 0 to n minus 1 divided by 2 minus 1 to the power k n over 2k plus 1 y 2k plus 1 x to n minus 2k minus 1 right so that's the most general form of a uh, homogeneous polynomial of degree n, which is harmonic. So we see that the space of solutions is just two-dimensional, spanned by a harmonic polynomial like this, a harmonic polynomial like this. So we have this harmonic polynomial xy, which is sum from k equal 0 and half integer part minus 1 to the power k and over to k 
y to k, x and minus 2k, and we have the polynomial h2 of xy, which is sum from k equals 0. Now n minus 1 divided by 2. The integer part minus 1 to the power k and 2k plus 1 y 2k plus 1 x to n minus 2k minus 1 and is the basis basis of two dimensional space of homogeneous harmonic polynomials of degree n. So perhaps it is instructive to write few of these polynomials for low n. So when n was equal to 0, we know that the basis is 1. For n equal 1, we had x, y as a basis of the space of homogeneous polynomials of degree 1 and this actually follows from this formula x corresponds to h1 and y corresponds to h2 for n equal 2 we can calculate from this formula that we have x squared minus y squared as h1 and 2xy as h2 for n equal 3 we have x cubed minus 3 xy squared and 3 x squared y minus y cubed for n equal 4 you can calculate that it's just like x force minus 6 x squared y squared plus y forced and here is 4 times x cubed y minus x y cubed and so on right so we have that for n equals 0 the space of harmonic polynomials is one dimensional and then for n greater than equal 1 the space of harmonic polynomials is always two dimensional and the basis for this space is given by this quite interesting formula. Right? Can we understand how this formula can be obtained in some easy way? Yes, we can, but we have to invoke information from complex analysis in one dimension. So let's call it complex tricks. Right? So there is a well known fact which says the following let f be a holomorphic function of one complex variable z equal x plus i y then this well-known fact says that if we take a function u to be real part of the holomorphic function f or u as imaginary part of holomorphic function f then u considers the function of x and y is harmonic so okay everybody knows this fact but for completeness let's prove it because it's very easy so if we have f holomorphic so by definition f sub z bar is equal to 0 where z bar is equal to x minus i y right but if f sub z bar is equal to 0 then also f sub z bar z is equal to 0 but now if we calculate what is f sub z bar z in terms of variables x and y so if you plot it plus 2 x to be z plus z bar 
by 2 and y to be z minus z bar by 2i then we see that f of z z bar which is 0 is the same as 1 fourth of f x x plus f y y and therefore if f is holomorphic that function f considered as a function of x and y is harmonic so in other words Laplacian on f is equal to 0 but Laplacian operator remember is second partial x plus second partial y and is a real operator so Laplacian bar is the same as Laplacian so if you now complex conjugate this equation which is satisfied by function f then you will see that function f bar is also harmonic and now the Laplace equation is linear so function f plus f bar is equal to 0 and function f minus f bar is equal to 0 so therefore this function which is real and this function which is real is also harmonic if f was holomorphic so that's the proof and now we can use this fact to understand deeper this formula for the basis of harmonic polynomials of a given degree we take a holomorphic function f of z a simple one z to the power n okay so we know that its real and imaginary part is a harmonic function that since z is x plus i y so z to the power n is x plus i y to the power n right and now we can use newton's binomial formula to expand this so this sum from j equals 0 to n n sub j now there is i y to the power j x to the power n minus j right but now we know that i squared is minus 1 so it's convenient to decompose this sum from the sum over j's which are even and odd so we first put the even part so it'll be sum from k equals 0 to the integer part of n half and then there will be n here over 2k then there will be i to the power 2k and then we y to the power 2k and there will be x to the power n minus 2k right and now there is the contribution from to the sum from the odd j's so it is again k equal 0 to now n minus 1 divided by 2 and now it is n over 2k plus 1 and now there is i to the power 2k times i and there is y to the power to 2k plus 1 and there is x n minus 2k minus 1 right so now when we just insert this information that a squared is minus 1 so we will have this sum from k equals 0 to n half minus 1 to the power k n over 2k y 2k x n minus 2k 
plus sum of k equals 0 to n minus 1 divided by half and here we will have minus 1 to the power k in front of this there will be i and there will be n over 2k plus 1 y 2k plus 1 x n minus 2k minus 1 right? so if we just compare this one with this one and that one with that one we'll see that the real part of this z to the power n is our h1 of xy and imaginary part of this thing is our h2 of xy so what are these homogeneous harmonic polynomials of degree n they are just real an imaginary part of a holomorphic part function z to the power n right so it is how you can understand these guys another interesting thing is that if we look at this identity that z to the power n is just this plus i times that then we can start from this side and we know that this is z to the power n and now let's consider z not in Cartesian coordinates but in a polar representation of a complex number so z is r to e i theta right that's yet another representation of a complex number which is just x plus i y right so if we just insert this thing here then we'll have r e to i theta to the power n which means that we will have r to the power n e to i n theta and now if we decompose e to i n theta as cosine n theta and sine n theta we'll get this formula so now when we compare the real part of this imaginary part of this with real part here and imaginary part here we'll get that this guy is equal r to the power n cosine n theta and this guy is r to the power n sine n theta so in particular we get that for n equal 1 we have that x is equal to r cosine theta y is equal to r sine theta for n equal to we will get that x squared minus y squared is equal to r squared cosine 2 theta and 2xy is equal to r squared sine 2 theta for n equal 3 we will get that x cubed minus 3 xy squared is equal to r cubed cosine 3 theta and 3x squared y minus y cubed is equal to r cubed sine 3 theta for n equal 4 we get that x4 minus 6x squared y squared plus y fourth is equal r to the power fourth cosine four theta and four x cubed y minus x y cubed is equal r fourth sine four theta and so on so now let's use this information and let us perform a transformation from the Cartesian coordinates x, y 
to polar coordinates r theta, where we have that x is equal to r cosine theta and y is equal to r sine theta. Right? So now we can ask what's going on with the Laplace operator when we pass from coordinates x, y to coordinates r theta. So it's an exercise to show that in coordinates of r theta, the Laplace equation looks like u sub r r plus 1 over r u sub r plus 1 over r squared u sub theta theta is equal to 0. Okay. So here we know that we have always two dimensional space of solutions of this equation in terms of harmonic polynomials with basis of these solutions h1 xy and h2 xy. But now passing from the Cartesian coordinates xy to the polar coordinates r theta, we see that these Cartesian harmonic polynomials get transformed into harmonic functions r to the power n times cosine or sine and theta in polar coordinates. This shows that this equation, which is still Laplace equation but now written in the polar coordinates, has always solutions of this form for every given non-negative integer n.